Good morning, Bill Berthet here from uh, southeastern Jacksonville, Mandarin area. Today we're going to visit my wildlife native habitat uh, area here. Today we're going to talk about foundation plants for your garden. We'll start with snow square stem. The scientific name is Melanthra nevia. Uh, it is a native plant. It's a butterfly and bee magnet. If we go to the what we call salt and pepper, we have these little white florets here and the pollinator is able to get his legs right on there and then be able to just take a stab with his proboscis or his tongue into all the little florets there in order to gain uh, nectar from. So it's very easy for them to get a lot of nectar in one, one spot. It is a, grows up to about five feet by five feet. It's a perennial, drought and um, salt spray tolerant. It has sun to semi uh, shade. The end of summer though, it's not a very attractive plant. It has a sloppy habit to it. So it's best to locate it in a natural or an out of the way area. In my garden, I use it as a center plant, but it's more like a landing pad that a lot of our different pollinators uh, will come to. Remember, we have pollinators that are flying around our yard and our neighborhood all the time. They just don't have a place to come to to be able to uh, nectar at. So you want to have a large area, preferably in one spot, that will attract uh, these particular pollinators that might otherwise just fly right by. Sweet pepper bush. The scientific name is uh, Clethra alnifolia. Uh, it is a native bush. Uh, this plant here is probably about uh, six years old, so it can grow up to a tree if, if left long enough. The spike clusters have a sweet almond uh, scented flower, and it's attractive to all kinds of uh, pollinators. It likes full sun to partial shade, drought tolerant once established. The hard freeze, it can die back, but it'll also grow back. You see the multi, again, florets that are on these uh, long um, spires for about a month and a half to two months uh, in the end of July and August, parts of August this plant when it's in bloom is a major nectar source. We're almost out of bloom on this plant now and I'm just showing you a couple of the um, blossoms that are still there but as John pans around he's seen some wasps and things like that are, that are using it for, uh, for nectar. Sweet almond. This is also called a loisa vergata. It's a bush to a tree. It's non-native. Uh, it's a native to Argentina. It's white to near white spires. Feature multiple florets. Attractive to all kinds of pollinators and especially a favorite of hair streak butterflies. And just earlier uh, I had a giant swallowtail. I have palamedes swallowtail and I had a tiger swallowtail. Uh, all nectaring on those um, white spires. It grows uh, year-round in zones 8B and 9A. In this case you can see it's a tree. It's probably 12 to 15 feet tall. This tree's probably 12 or 14 years old, somewhere in that range. Uh, it's gotten through several really strong winters such as the um, January in 2010 where we had uh, multiple days of very hard freezes, but it was able to survive that and uh, come back. It's a great overall plant. Probably needs to be trimmed a little bit more if you want it uh, in a more formal setting. Next foundation plant we're gonna have is firebush. This is the scientific name for the native variety is Amelia patens patens. It's a medium bush, but in this case, uh, mine grows 12 to 14 feet high. Uh, it's a common plant in South Florida where it grows uh, over 15 feet. Uh, once established, it's the heat, drought, and moderate salt spray tolerant, and also it's uh, really a magnet for butterflies and also for hummingbirds. It has a long tubular flower to it, so the hummingbird, which has a long tongue, is able to get in there for nectar. Also, several of our long-tongued or long proboscis butterflies, orange-barred sulfur and our cloudless sulfur, uh, they like it as, as a nectar source. The blooms uh, can last for months. They die back with a hard freeze, 
but we'll come back next year. Um, it's a root hardy perennial. There's no insect and it doesn't have a problem with diseases also. Best in full sun but does well in partial shade. A non-native smaller lighter colored flowers and smoother leaved variety is called Hamelia patens glabra. One of our foundation plants is a host vine here. We have passion vine. This is a non-native um, passion incense, uh, it's, which is Passiflora incarnata ex cincinnata. There is a native that's called Passiflora incarnata. One of the differences to tell, other than the flowers being different colors, is a number of leaves. In our uh, cerulea here, or our incense, we have five leaves, and in our incarnata, we only have three leaves. Host plant for both our zebra longwing as well as our golf fertility. It blooms are a nectar source for other pollinators. Large bees really like to sit on this platform right in here and then just go to town walking around this area here. So there's quite a bit of pollen to be uh, taken from that particular bloom. It blooms from late spring uh, to the fall. It can grow 5 to 15 feet in a year and it can spread. So if you grow it in your yard, um, grow it in an area that you know it's going to spread out from that one spot. Notice where she's taking her legs, her feet, the bottom of her feet there, and she's touching the plant to see if it's a suitable one uh, for her to lay her eggs on. She knows it is, so now she's waiting and flooding around to find just the right spot. Generally she'll lay um, 12 to 16 eggs. They'll be kind of an orange to red color as a cluster. After four or five days, there'll be a group of very tiny caterpillars that'll come out of their eggs. They always go on the end leaf of the plant, which is the tiniest leaf, and they all usually are hidden underneath the, the leaf. The reason for that, they haven't eaten enough of the host plant, which contains a toxin, which is distasteful to their predators yet, so they're still vulnerable. Uh, after they eat a couple um, stems, they go down the stem, eat a couple leaves, then they start to uh, go where there's going to be more singletons. Uh, then they have enough toxins built in that that'll probably get them um, safely through to being a uh, chrysalis. Can you say again what this, which variety this is? Oh, oh this is a, um, this, she's laying an egg right now. She's laying a group of eggs. Remember I was telling you she lays more than one in one spot. So she'll probably lay a cluster. So we'll get a close up on it and see. Uh, this is um, a pipe vine. It's, a, um, it's a Aristolochia elegans or with also what they sometimes call litter dollars. It is a pipe, pipe vine. It has a beautiful purple flower to it and its host plant for our Polydamus swallowtail, which you see the female laying eggs right now. This butterfly is generally found in South Florida. Um, it's also found all the way down um, Chile and, south of, and southern South America. Uh, the northernmost range actually on the eastern area is going to be right here uh, in Jacksonville. I've had a colony here since approximately 2007 and they come back usually every year um, and I grow a lot of this pipe vine all around my yard. Let's see how many eggs she laid, see what it looks like. Oh, well, here we have the group of eggs. Uh, in this case it looks like she nearly two, four, six, I don't know, eight, something like that. So these are her cluster of eggs. And the little caterpillars will come out of the eggs. They'll travel up to the smallest leaf. So you might have, you'll have all six or seven of them. They'll be real tiny. They'll all be underneath the leaf there. They're still hiding. And the reason they're doing is, is because they haven't sequestered the toxin yet um, that it's going to have when it eats this Aristia, this pipe vine, Aristolochia uh, elegans. It uh, has a beautiful um, calico flower to it, which is in the kind of purplish to, uh, to beige colors. Anyways, the caterpillars will get on this little leaf right here and then they'll start eating it as a group and they'll slowly uh, work their way down to where the leaves get larger. And then once the leaves get larger, 
they'll have gone through several instars. By then, they won't be uh, as vulnerable uh, pr to the to uh, predators. From that point, uh, they'll probably go into um, singletons and they'll be feeding uh, by themselves um, till eventually they get to um, go into pupa. The caterpillar generally walks away from its host plant uh, and will lay somewhere else um, to emerge later on. So this is the pipe vine flower when it comes in bloom. It has very little nectar value. Uh, during the last 20 minutes I've counted uh, 12 species of butterflies that are um, stopping along the way to nectar on firebush, tree spinach, melanthra, um, nevea, passion vine, and plumbago. In closing, I'd like to talk about the five foundation plants that were discussed earlier. We have four that are nectar. Uh, we have snow square stem. We have sweet pepper bush, sweet almond, and fire bush. One host plant, uh, passiflora vine, or a passion flower. Uh, this is a passiflora incense. Hope to see you next time. Mm -hmm.